What is going on, everybody? Man, Mike is back with another video. Back here to talk about the iPhone 15 Pro. Late, but still great in the words of philosophy. Three weeks later, and yes, I told you guys I was coming back with my camera review three weeks in. I know the first week we covered basically what? Software, performance, hardware. Second week we covered battery life. Now we're covering the cameras and, of course, after a month, which will basically be like <laughs> the end of this coming week, we're going to kind of total in totality cover the entirety of the phone. So hopefully you guys have been appreciating the content. And also shout out to you guys for supporting uh, the wife jumping on the channel, giving her take and perspective on the tech that she uses. Of course, she uses Apple devices as well. And we're pretty much kind of like an, an, an Apple family now since I have fully converted over. Of course, I still love and know in and out the Android world, but I am now learning the ins and outs of the Apple world. So shout out to you guys for supporting the wife and her perspective on the channel. And if you guys have been enjoying it and you know want to continue to see her featured on the channel, of course, continue to ignite that like button. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Don't worry, I'll wait. <laughs> I'm taking that from her. It seemed like it worked a little bit. Go ahead and, and hit that like button real quick. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. You know, because a lot of you guys are not, are, you're probably returning, but not subscribed to the channel. So by subscribing to the channel, you guys definitely don't miss out on the content. And hit that notification bell so that way you never miss my videos. So I should back to like see what's cracking. So now without further ado, we're going to get into my quick thoughts on some of the footage and the quality that I've been able to get out of the cameras. And then I'm going to show you guys the highlights of some of the stuff I shot, which was just outside of work, I wanted to keep the sample size relatively small, so that way when I come back with a more overview review covering the details of the camera further, I'll have better shots or more shots to share with you there. So the first thing we're going to talk about here is the camera quality, not the video quality, but the photo quality. And I must say, Apple is doing their thing when it comes to the cameras on here because you know just as you guys can see here kind of featured a little bit of that boom 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 all right man what's going on the cameras are so solid on here right and one of the things apple did on here is if you guys see there we have what's called a lens switch out between 24 35 or 30 24 28 and 35 but i maintain 24 and 35 those are my settings for my cameras on my iphone 15 pro if you guys want to know how to do that if you swipe out go to settings then come in here go down to the camera and once you find camera hit that and then jump in here and this is where you'll see your settings for your device so of course i'm rocking 4k 60 uh, 1080p at 240 frames per second for slow mo 4k 30 on the cinematic and of course, if I click on it, that's the best you got. Uh, format wise, I'm using high efficiency and I'm using the photo mode in terms of 24 megapixels. So I'm getting the most out of the 48 megapixels on this camera. And when you switch to, I believe, like ProRes and Pro Raw, uh, Pro Raw for the photos, you get like the full 48 megapixel max. And then, of course, down here, as you see, Pro Raw resolution control, Pro Raw slash max, which is my default. And then, yes, I am shooting ProRes for video or I have the ability. And the encoding is SDR. I'm not doing HDR because I'm not that advanced in terms of editing video or color grading video yet. So I'm sticking to something that's relatively easy. You do have the choice between HDR, SDR, and log. But for me, I'm doing SDR on the video. And then, of course, as you guys see, I kind of leave most of this on. I use the grid to make sure I get good, solid, quality, framed shots for photos and video. I leave my photography style on original. I don't use any filters. Uh, matter of fact, if you guys can see, see, I don't even use, I just use standard, right? So click out of that. And then main camera, as you guys can see, you have the option to turn on and off 28 and 35. You could turn them off all, like, all the way through, but for me, I like doing the 28 mil or the uh, 24 uh at the one times and default to 35 on the one and a half times because traditionally or classically 35 millimeter is a very very common and most referenced framing for 
photo and video so that's why I use 35 millimeter there and I like a relatively different a relative difference between 24 and 35 because 28 is marginally not really changing the frame up all that much but 24 to 35 is a nice change from a wide angle to more of a traditional wide angle with the 35 so that's my camera setup there i do use lens correction and macro control uh, which is it shows automatically switching to the ultra wide camera to capture macro photos and video so i don't mind that in terms of my settings so if we go back to the cameras that's how you get this set up here default into one and a half times and then if i need a little extra space i just hit that button switches back to the one x of course you got your ultra wide this is as you guys can see this is the <laughs> this is the studio where we're shooting at now although it looks relatively the same here you'll see whenever i do headshot videos again slightly tweaked background because i, I swap rooms but yes this is where i'm at in terms of the studio and then of course you got your two times which is a 48 megapixel equivalent of focal length and then you have i believe 77 with the three times so you get your telephoto there and i will say that the camera quality on all four lenses technically speaking are very very good there's a good blend of clarity sharpness contrast now i i will say sometimes the colors can look a little pastel-y from time to time but overall it does not take away from the photos and it's sometimes that's really just affected by the amount of sun or exposure that you get for your shots and then of course being able to use Lightroom to edit those shots if necessary you have those kind of controls with the iPhone 15 Pro and I really really like that and there's really not too much to complain about in terms of the standard photo quality or using raw to of course get more data to then edit and post now portrait mode is also nice because the the blur is so beautiful and it looks more and more realistic now if you have a little bit more fuzzy hair like me in terms of like a fro it will then you can kind of see the edge detection a little bit more around the hair but it doesn't take away from the photos you just if you if you're pixel peeping a little bit you'll be able to see the the edge detection on the artificial blur with portrait mode as opposed to a traditional camera with a traditional lens like my beloved 85 mil here that i have not used in a while from my sony a7 III. you'll get that natural more realistic blur and edge detection is way more flawless from that perspective but we're talking about a phone here and the fact that this can near mimic the lens is a sight for sore eyes you know what i'm saying so uh, really no complaints there even a natural blur with photo mode is still really good it's of course softer but that's where it's more realistic and that's where you get that subtle beauty out of your your bokeh effect uh so to speak so from photos very very clean and then even cinematic if you want well cinematic really is more so of a video thing but if we switch back here to photos and do panoramic they do they do a good job getting panoramic shots again there's those small tweaks that you never really notice that apple does you know year over year or update over update that improves camera quality and it's these subtle features that get improved and maintained over the course of an iphone's life and generation where panoramic gives you a realistic ultra wide view angle of whatever scenario that you're shooting and it looks like it's it wasn't even stitched together that's how solid panoramic mode is with the iphone and i must say i've been enjoying the cameras they're reliable cameras for good photos night mode is improved on here as well night photography is much much better this year around with the iphone 15 pro and that's because these lenses are able to take in more light and of course if you want to get the best night mode by being as super still as possible if you are really good with a with a with a with a oh, with a stable hand, you will get excellent excellent night mode shots for sure. And then of course by using a tripod or just a stable apparatus for your iPhone by getting night photo shots, you're gonna you're gonna be amazed at the level of detail and light or exposure for the shot that ends up getting absorbed by the lenses and then through computational photography, producing a very fine image and that's what you want now do i think samsung might still have them in terms of night photography and borderline photography in general Whew. 
it is a close one because I, the S23 Ultra is super solid when it comes to photos. I can't even front on that. They're super solid. So that's really the competition here between the two is the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra and really the Pixel. I mean, I, I've had the Pixel 7 Pro. I love using it. I was hoping they were going to send me a Pixel 8 Pro. They didn't. But the Pixel 8 series and or the Pixel series Google's computational photography is out of this world, especially when it comes to night photography, because of the amount of data they've had to be able to study and 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 machine learn and artificially learn and then produce again fine images. So when you're talking about the the big the big chiefs in the room, Samsung, Google, Apple, and here with Apple's iPhone 15 Pro again, mwah, beautiful. And that is the camera quality there for the iPhone 15 Pro, of course, here's probably where I'll probably put up some of the, the cameras, camera shots that I was able to get. There's a mix between the 24 millimeter, the 35 millimeter uh, focal lengths, uh, the portrait modes, and not a lot of people. I don't even know if I took pictures of me to tell you the truth, but I just took a lot of pictures of like the nature that was around my office and just getting shots like that. I wanted to show you guys here in detail for you guys. So check that out right here. And then after those go through, we'll, we'll jump into the videos. solid rugged two-piece case made to protect your iphone providing you two screen protectors as well as a belt clip for the iphone so that way when not holding it not holding this monstrosity of a protective case you can have it right there at your hip tactile buttons cutouts for the camera including a hinge for the phone to hold it right side up or upside down to give you hands-free connectivity with your phone. Shout out to Caseborn. So hopefully you guys were, be, were able to appreciate some of those shots I was able to get. If you guys, what are you guys' thoughts? Do you guys think Apple is doing a fine job with their camera quality, with their photo quality? Let me know down in the comment section below. And what, what do you guys think of some of those shots that I that I got? Uh, it was nothing overcasty from that perspective. There was still some sun involved or some good light involved. 
let me know down in the comments uh, in the comment section below. Now let's get into the video quality. And here again, Apple is doing their thing with the videos. Man, one of the things I really liked about the videos is, of course, that we got 4K60, and I believe we got 4K60 on the front facing as well. And that's a game changer for sure because you get to maintain your your uh, your framing when it comes to editing in post. You don't have to worry about trying to combine 30 and 60. You can shoot everything in 60 and edit and or be able to use the same footage to do slow-mo. And that's a wonderful thing. And that is something that I actually appreciate from these cameras because again, the videos are very, very good, very, very solid. The other thing that I also appreciate is I don't even have to really use the action mode up here because this does a good job still at maintaining stability even not using action mode. And I I will have shots, of course, with that at the end of this segment, this talking segment here. But act, act, uh, action mode, non-action mode, great stabilization when it comes to these lenses and the cameras overall for video. Cinematic video is another interesting thing because the, the blur, the bokeh, the depth of field, Although a little much more artificial, it still looks very, very realistic. And it has improved year over year when it comes to the blur, the edge detection, the, the ability to maintain focus on the subject while they're moving to maintain that consistent blur or bokeh effect, as it were, around the subject. Very, very, very solid on there. And as you guys can see, you got your 1X and your 2X for cinematic video, flawless. And I believe you got cinematic video for your front-facing cameras as well, but that's at 4K 30 on both ends and both fronts. So it is interesting that we get 4K 30, not 4K 60 for cinematic, but I don't think that's a big deal for me. I'm personally a fan of 4K 30. This video is shot in 4K 30 and edited in 4K 30. So for me, I, I appreciate 4K 30. I'm not bugging about 4k 30 but it's definitely definitely solid one of the things i noticed about cinematic video though is the the color and contrast of the videos enhance as well meaning they get deeper so you get much more rich contrasty images or video uh video output from the cameras and i don't know if you could say that's a good thing or bad thing it just depends on taste but the ability watching how the the the, the tone and the color of the image kind of deepens and darkens a little bit, makes it feel a little bit more overcast, at least uh, specifically in the shots that I got. But again, still very, very good. It maintains consistent quality throughout the shooting process. And what I mean, what that's what you want from a camera. The modes that they give you for them to work, work properly, and for you to actually want to use them. Of course, slow-mo, I don't use slow-mo all that often, but you got 240 frames, you got 120 frames, uh, you got... HD 240. Okay, I thought that changed. I thought it was full HD, but it is what it is. And you, of course, you got time lapse, which is interesting. So when you con con consider video, very very solid. When you consider using ProRes, again, very very solid. You will notice a little bit more seeping of battery life because you're utilizing way more of the camera, so it's gonna need more video, po uh, battery power output. But again, the A17 Pro within the phone is running making sure that you get that image you're getting that shot that you need and that's something that you i mean that's what you want that's exactly what you want out of this phone and i'm happy to say that i like the video quality of the iphones uh specifically here the iphone 15 pro and i think they are um, an improvement year over year in this case and i can recommend these cameras for daily use they get <laughs> micah's check checklist check off bop, bop, for being able to use these cameras so let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think about the video quality i'm about to display it now and uh outside of that let me know what you guys think otherwise here goes the video footage now and we have here 4k 30 on the front facing cameras of the iphone 15 pro and this is what you get here. The quality is very, very nice. Sun in my face. You get to see the punchiness of the red in my shirt for work. 
guys see the clouds and since you have this is the iphone 15 pro using this with a tripod wouldn't actually be a bad idea because of the compactness of the phone and then of course the quality the stabilization of the cameras coupled with something even more stabilizing so you don't have to hold it with your phone i think a tripod would work very very well with the iphone 15 pro and last but not least cinematic mode giving you that bokeh effect or that cinematic blur that you see around the subject that it's focused on 4k 60 is available with the standard recording on the front facing cameras 4k 30 is available with cinematic video or cinematic mode rather and i don't think it's bad i think it looks pretty pretty good it actually feels like it adds a a, a level of contrast to the individual or the subject at hand it really gives you a nice nice natural bokeh field and feel when recording content just paying attention to the to the blur it looks very very clean looks very natural only in moments can you maybe tell the way the subject is you know essentially kind of cut out will you then kind of notice the artificial blur and it's really like around the hair but even then it it looks very very clean and right here alone you can see how it kind of tones down the color saturation for cinematic mode i'm not as punchy and now granted i'm in the shade but still not as punchy as it would be with the other video modes let me know what you guys think down in the comments rear facing camera 4k 30 the iphone 15 pro is capable of 4k 60 it's also capable of pro res and for me i switched my pro res to sdr since i'm not all that skillful with hdr content yet so i'm sticking with something i kind of know that I'm, that I'm learning and with the use of davinci resolve and color grading it definitely helps out i also have the active mode turned off so this is the default stabilization that you will experience with the iphone 15 pro just walking around my building that works that way you can see the different color variation how the reds look multiple different colors of red there how the ground looks just get that contrasty feel from the cameras as well as the clarity and how everything feels nice it's one thing to see it but to also feel what you see is something i definitely appreciate about these iphone cameras this is also one x now if we want to go wide angle so my finger there towards the top but this is wide angle you're going to get something similar of course the wide angle is a 12 megapixel camera i believe so this is what you're going to be getting it might have a slightly softer image ever so slight but nothing to take away from the quality and as you see it's a slight overcast day in terms of the clouds and i like the fact that you can see the different hues of the blue in the sky along with the clouds and their variations as well so this is what you guys can see here with the wide angle switching to the 2x look how stable it is even in 2x this is this is amazing very clean very 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 clean in 2x you're still able to get good quality good stabilization while walking let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think about the video quality, the audio quality. Now it is possible you might be hearing it through my AirPods. I don't think so since I switched over to the phone. Even though I have my AirPods in my ears. This is what you're course you're going to lose a little bit of stabilization with this camera 
is because it's so tight, telephoto quality. If we approach the gate here and come back through, this is what you get to see. What good quality. Of course, I'm across the street from a hospital. They do a lot of colonoscopies and endoscopies at this hospital over here. That's the doctor's BMW, straight fire. This is the video quality you will receive on the rear facing cameras of the iPhone 15 Pro. Now, if I turn active mode on and I just run on this strip here, you'll see just how well the active mode is. As you saw on that strip, with active mode on, it probably was barely, barely any, any jerkiness as I walk around now with it on. Now you can use it with the two and three X cameras as well. For the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna showcase it with the one, but it is still pretty nice that you get that quality still and the capabilities with all four cameras. So hopefully you guys were able to appreciate and enjoy the video quality. I tried to shoot everything in landscape as, as opposed to uh, vertical. And if I did do any vertical, I'll probably do those for like shorts or like Instagram, TikTok, all that kind of stuff. Let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think about the photo quality and the video quality, anything that stood out to you. Do you like using the different modes that Apple has provided us or that even Android has provided us? Let me know down in the comment section below you guys' thoughts. But again, as always, if you guys haven't already, make sure you guys ignite that like button. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. So that way you my videos. So that way we subscribe to Slack. See what's cracking. It's your man Micah signing out. Until the next video. Wait for it.